Welcome back to SketchUp for Architecture Students brought to you by the School of Architecture at the University of Queensland. In this short video we're going to continue um, making our model of a simple timber frame building and we're going to look at the application and use of layers. As we start getting more and more complicated models, um, layers help us sort of uh, control the viewing and help us um, edit elements uh, in a more straightforward manner. Now, the layer palette should be available on the top um, pull-down menu. You can see here everything's currently drawn on a single layer, layer 0. Right next door you can see there's an icon for the layer manager. I'm going to open that up and create myself a few extra layers. I'm going to use the plus key. Now I'm going to add a layer called subfloor. Add another one, floor, and another one walls. Now you can see here the radio button on the side indicates which layer is active and through here we can also make layers visible or turn them on and off. Now everything at the moment is currently on this layer 0. You can see if I turn off layer 0 nothing appears on the screen. Now I'm going to keep layer 0 as a sort of construction layer so to speak. So I'm going to cut all of the layer, all the elements that are currently in layer 0 and move them into that subfloor layer. So what I'm simply going to do is select all the elements, go Control A or Command A in a Mac and cut, Control X. I'm going to then go to my layer manager, select the subfloor, make it the active layer, then Control V to paste those elements into a new layer. So if I make layer 0 the active layer and I turn off the subfloor you can see all of those elements are now in there. Okay, I'm going to now just create a few extra elements. I'm going to create myself a floor through here. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool and simply just pull a simple rectangle across all of those joists there. Now I'm going to pull the floor in to give me a, an allowance around the perimeter for the walls. So I'm going to use my offset tool and pull in from the side here 100 millimeters to give me an allowance of 100 millimeters for the wall. Now I'm going to select that the elements around the outside. And just delete those out and make sure I pick off those extra lines through there. So I've got my floor element through here. I'm going to give my floor a bit of thickness, 25 millimeters. Enter. Now working between layers doesn't necessarily mean that the geometries of the different elements in layers are going to be distinct. So if I start making an element um, say in the walls layer and that geometry sticks to this floor plate that I've made, we are going to have some problems with um, geometries overlapping and distorting each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off the floor. Before I do that I'm going to give my floor a parquetry, here we go, dark wood floor. I'm going to select all the elements by making sure I triple click, get that dark wood floor and then flood it through there. Okay. Now I'll just close that off. I'm going to select, triple click to select that floor element and now I'm going to make it as a group. Okay. Now you notice if I double click on it I can check it's a group because I've got the familiar editing bounding box around that element. Now what it means is if I start to make my walls around that those geometries are not going to stick to that floor. Now I'm going to make my walls. So I'm going to turn off the floor through there. And I'm going to follow a very same similar procedure. I'm going to just pull a rectangle across there. I'm going to do an offset of 100. Enter. And instead of deleting the wall, I'm just going to delete the surface in between there. Now I'm going to triple click to make sure I've got all of my wall elements and I'm going to pull that up 2700 
high. Okay, so there you can see I have all of my elements there. I can turn on my floor. So you can see I can turn my subfloor off, my floor off, on on. So not only will it help me sort of navigate the model and, and edit things when things get a bit complicated, but it also can come in handy when we're doing some presentations.